product time. Let's new it up. Okay. First new product we have. This is the super awesome Sylvia watercolor bot. Yeah. Okay, okay. This is big. Okay. Okay. Let me just hold this up. Look what you got. <laughs> so this thing is really big, and um, I'm not gonna demo it because there's actually a lot of really great videos online. But this is a pretty much, it's a fully assembled kit. I think you only have to do a little bit of, um, I don't think you have to do any soldering. You just have to put a little like screws yeah. and, and tape and, and wire and, and um, string to put it together. But it's a watercolor drawing bot. We ordered these a while ago and they finally came in. Um, this is from uh, designed by Evil Mad Scientist, our friends in uh, Sunnyvale, as well as Super Awesome Sylvia. So let's look at some of the nice uh, images. Yeah, we have some photos here and the photos are great. You can watercolor so it comes like this yeah even comes with a watercolor set like Crayola and then basically you can control it from a computer to automatically draw like you can draw yourself but you can also download programs to draw and like you know do really detailed images like this and this shows the gantry system it's this is cute. one of the coolest robots in the world because it makes like art stipple. yeah it's a basically art bot it can do watercolor as well it, I think the watercolor is fun but you can also do pen or pencil or yeah, I like that they made it open source. This is like... Okay, nice. Yeah, nice. this is what I'd want to show aliens. They're like, hey, what did you guys do, you know, besides like the rest of the stuff you're talking about? I'd be like, we made this bot that makes, this robot that makes well, art. This perfectly circular, yeah. um, or semi, hemi-circular rainbows. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right, Lady Ada, next up, we've got um, we've got some, some LEDs. So yes. there it goes. Yeah, and so what, I'll, I'll just, it's bright. Okay. Yeah. We can show it on the overhead if you'd like to do that. Sure. I mean, is this going to blow out every camera that we possibly have? No, it's not so bad. Um, so this is uh, dot star strips in white, and we introduced the 144 LED per meter dot star strips last week. This is 60 LED, and we also have 30 LED, which I would plug in, but trust me, it looks exactly the same. And this is the cool white. So instead of having RGB, like normally we have dot stars and neopixels and like red, green, blue, and then you can color mix for any color. These only have white LEDs. There's three white LED elements and then a phosphor. So this means you get very clear and beautiful white um, with like 24-bit precision color. And um, because it's dot stars, you don't get the flickery effect. Like if I swing it around, you don't see like the stippling, which you would normally see with neopixels. So that's really nice. Um, and this is the cool white, and then let me grab the warm white. Just give me one second, and I will do the swaparoo. Okay. You can tell the difference. Yeah, no, hold on, just hold on. I haven't, whoa, this is coming loose. Okay, so this is um, the warm white 30. So this one has fewer LEDs per meter, but it's less expensive and uses less power. And you can see it has a more like an um, incandescent warm uh, light to it. Like it looks more like a, a light bulb, old style light bulb, rather than a blue, more fluorescent color. This is a 3000 uh, Kelvin and this is a, about 6000 Kelvin. You're not gonna get like perfect color matching, but like this, it, it, all the LEDs are basically pretty much the same color. And so this is also very beautiful. It looks like a little bit like a flame maybe or a candle. Um, so we have both colors available, both uh, temperatures, as well as RGB, of course, if you wanna have full color. But the thing is, if you wanna have like this beautiful uh, white, tint, you never quite get it with the RGB LEDs. You always kind of, they're a little bit too blue and like you can kind of see the individual LED colors come out. So for people who are like really into white LEDs and like I am super into white LEDs, I think they just look really beautiful. Um, we have now digital addressable LED strips in warm and cool white and 30, 60 and 144 yeah. LEDs per meter. So you knew, you would use a NeoPixel library to, to control these still? Close. These are dot stars. So they use a uh. two wire protocol. We could get the NeoPixels in white, but the flickery effect that NeoPixels have because they're slower, um, it's kind of noticeable, especially if, I feel like if you're gonna have white LEDs, you want it to look really good. So the dot stars, instead of having three wires, they have four, power, ground, clock, and data, which makes them use one more pin than NeoPixels, but they don't have that timing restriction, which means they works really well with like a Raspberry Pi or okay. like a Teensy or a Trinket. Anything that has two pins available, you don't have to worry about the timing specificness, which you do with NeoPixels. So yeah. okay. A little more flexible. So then here's the, um, I got a couple of photos on Thonish. Yeah, let's show some of those photos. We spent a, a lot of time and effort on these. I want to show these Yeah, show these off. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can cut these, and they come in a weatherproof strip, which you can remove off if you want. And they're flexible, and they're just like LED strips, but they're this beautiful warm white and cool white color. Yeah. So now we have them all.
Okay, next up, um, this is the kippah. This is right. We have two kippot, which is the plural of kippah. Um, these are, well, they look a lot like hats. And normally you'd say, but labiata. This is a thing that plugs into a Raspberry Pi, and it's a hat. So why aren't you calling it a hat? Yeah. And that's a really good question, and I'm glad you asked that There's question. There's issues calling something a hat. I'm pretty picky, and uh, I understand the Raspberry Pi Foundation is also pretty picky, too. And they have the word hat, and it's reserved for things that have this shape. It has to have, like, this shape. It doesn't have to have the cutouts for the, the, um, the uh, camera and display. It has to have these four mounting holes, it has to have this shape, it has to have the 2 by 20 connector, and it has to plug into a Raspberry Pi. And like, there's a couple other little rules about it, but the one rule that we don't have on this is it has to have an EEPROM on it that lets you have it auto-detect which product, which hat it is, so that the software auto-loads. And for reasons I will explain later, this PCB does not have that EEPROM, and it cannot have that EEPROM on it. And so while it's almost a hat, it's not quite a hat. So instead, it's a kippa which is a traditional Jewish head covering that you put on your head. And you could put a hat on top of it. So I don't know, maybe you could do that with this if you would like. But it's a hat-like thing, but it's not officially a hat. So that's why it's not a hat. OK, that was very but clever. I'm glad you asked. OK, and there's two different also, types. Also, it's like Pesach. So like, this is a good time to like be a good Jewish boy. Put your kippah on. Yeah. True. It is. All right, so let's go back to what it is. Yeah, and there's and there's two types, and you have two of them. I got two. So let's yeah. go to like um, like this photo. Okay, so here's the deal with what the Kipa is. It's a it's a DPI Kipa, and and what it does is, if you have a Raspberry Pi, you may have noticed that there's an HDMI output you can connect like HDMI monitor or like a TV or whatever, and you can also like add little displays like a Pi TFT on top, like little Pi TFT hats, and like the displays and such, and so. You can have those little displays, you can have a composite or HDMI display, but there's no native way, historically, to connect a display directly without HDMI, composite, or the Pi TFT. And like, especially if you've ever done microcomputers or other stuff, you would, most chips have the capability to drive these displays raw. And we have products that do HDMI to raw display conversion. Uh, and we sold those in the store, and then um, Eben and um, some other people from the Pi Foundation emailed and said, hey, by the way, we saw that you're doing a lot of this like HDMI backpack and TFP 401, like HDMI to display conversion. But by the way, did you know that the Pi can actually drive these displays natively? And I said, I did not know that. And they said, now you know it. And I said, I do now know it. And I'm going to use that knowledge to design a new product that allows you to dis add a, one of these large displays, 5-inch or 7-inch or 4.3-inch, TFT displays without needing the HDMI decoder. This means it's less power because you don't have to have the HDMI cable coming out of the Pi to an HDMI decoder to the display. Uh, it's a lot less expensive because you don't have to pay for all that extra circuitry and you don't need that big HDMI cable. Um, but there's a, a trade-off. In exchange for the lower power and lower cost, because these displays use like six RGB pins, uh, six red pins, six green pins, six blue pins, dot clock, H-Sync, V-Sync, all that stuff. It uses pretty much all the pins available on the Pi, all the, of the 20 by two connector. It uses all but five, including the I squared C pins, um, the UART console pins, and also the two pins that you would use to connect an EEPROM. So like everything from two, pin two to pin 21 are taken. Like they're all taken and you can't change those pins. You have to use those pins hard coded in the chip. And I trust me, I'm like, oh, can I move one? No, you can't move them. This is it. <laughs> but in exchange, you get this low cost, low power way to connect a display. So we have two versions of this. So can you hide me right now? Bye. <laughs> so we have this version that has just the display, and there's we have a 40 pin extender cable. Okay, what, and then we also what, have what uh, sh this version which also adds touch capability because oftentimes these screens have touch capability. So you now have like a touch mouse as well as like a high speed display. And what's nice about these is that because it uses that same HDMI decoder, it's as fast as HDMI. So you get like full speed, like HDMI like display with like all the colors and it's extremely fast and it has all the, the um, acceleration that you would normally want, like the OpenGL acceleration, you can play Minecraft and Scratch and all that stuff. And then um, here's what the hat looks like. And this is a really good photo, so I'll show this. It plugs in 
Um, at the top, there's a connector for the display. We have a little boost converter for the backlight. And then um, we have the connector on the right that would let you do a USB touch. And I'll just show it off on the overhead real fast. OK, so this is the Pi. And then this is the, the Kipa on it. And then if you're going to be using USB, there's a USB cable that goes around this way. Now, normally, I would use something like I2C or SPI to get the data from the touch. But again, all those pins are taken, not available. So you have to use USB. So that's why there's this kind of like funny cable around this. And then this is an extender, just to make it easy. You don't need to have this yeah. extender, but it basically takes the 40-pin connector and flips over here. And then this is the display. These are five-inch displays used in like, um, like GPS things in cars, usually your control panels. And um, I have the touch screen, so you can. Do you need to touch. run any special kernel to get this to work? No. It just you works. Do not. Well, you have to make a small update in the boot config to tell okay. it to look for That's this. That's a lot easier than messing around with a new kernel. There's no new kernels. Wow. <laughs> Oh, are you, are you voluntarily to do the next kernel development <laughs> run? I don't even know. Yeah, okay. I don't even know where I'd start. I think I'd just, I think I'd just, um, I'd just jump out the window. Debt mod me. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but you know, you have touch, and then you can even see there's a little LED that indicates when it detects touch. But other than that, like, it's basically, you know, you're running um, software as if it was, it's, it's, it's fast as HDMI display, and you get all the colors. So, for example, I can boot Scratch. It's going to take a minute because it's Scratch and it's slow. Um, or I can run Midori, or I can run Minecraft, or I can run like Quake or whatever, and they get like a full display. And also it's kind of lightweight, like you only have this to mount on whatever. So if you want to add a display, like a really nice 840 pixel display with all the color and full HDMI type speed, this is a way to do it. But you're going to lose all your pins. So no turn more, off. No more pins right So yeah. But we also have the HDMI displays if you don't want to lose any pins, but they're more expensive because they come, it, they, they handle all the pin stuff through the HDMI port. OK. All right. That's the key point. OK. So uh, that and uh, we, yeah, we talked about this, but um, you'll see the gem in the store shortly. I just got to wait. and. OK. So this is the new Arduino Gemma that is coming soon. It's not quite Little blue done for different. everything. So we're going to take signups. We're gonna box them up, and we're just gonna get like uh, make sure that the ID support is already in and ready to go, so that like when you buy this, it's totally. This is amazing. This is about the size of a quarter, and it can drive a bunch of NeoPixels. You know, NeoPixels and buttons and sensors. Yeah. It's the same hardware as the Neo, uh, as the, sorry, as the Gemma V2 that we have in the store. Uh, we actually kind of designed that as the prequel to this to kind of make sure that the hardware design was good. It's the same design, but it's a beautiful teal blue. It's going to be officially, this version will be officially supported in the Arduino ID. You will not have to install any extra software or anything. It's just going to like work, which is totally awesome. Um, it's got FCC and C certifications. It's ma made manufactured here in the United States. We have even some photos later we'll show. We have an animated GIF. <laughs> uh, this is the first official Arduino made in the United States. So I think that's a, a, something to celebrate. Yeah. Um, with the Arduino logo. Yes. Yeah. Just I know. This is little because not to, um, we have the Pro Mini, we love the Pro yeah, Mini. Yeah, it's yeah. very good. And the Lily Pad, these are all official Arduinos, but this is the first like Arduino Arduino. It's an, yeah, it's, you know. it gets complicated. That's this Pantone teal color. Okay, the first of many, hopefully. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. All right. So that's so uh, sign up for that. that's the new products, folks. Ta-da.